I want you to meet Brian Fitzpatrick and Chris Jacobs. These two chodes are the reason this happened. The bill is passed. This morning, House Democrats kicking off a month-long recess with the first step to a legislative victory for the Biden administration. The yeas are 217. The nays are 213. Narrowly passing a ban on assault weapons for the first time since 1994. Congressman Chris Jacobs, whose district includes parts of a still reeling Buffalo, one of just two Republicans voting yes. Ten people killed and uh, 13 in total. Uh, shot by uh, uh, AR-15. President Biden praising the passage in a statement Friday night and urging senators to move quickly. To get a bill passed in the House, you need a 51 vote majority. The AR-15 ban passed the House with a 217 to 213 vote. Five Democrats voted against the bill, but two Republicans, Brian Fitzpatrick and Chris Jacobs, voted in favor of the AR-15 ban. If these two Republicans had voted against the AR-15 ban, the bill would have died. Yes, you heard that correctly. The only reason the bill passed in the House is because two Republicans voted for it. Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania and Chris Jacobs of New York. If any of you watching this video live in any of these two districts, here is their direct office line and DC office line. So now, what's next? Well, now it goes to the Senate. Unlike the House, however, where you need a 51 vote majority, in the Senate, you need a 60 vote majority to pass the bill. That means 60 out of 100 senators have to vote in favor of the AR-15 ban in order for it to pass. Right now, the Senate is split evenly down the middle between Republicans and Democrats. So the likelihood of 10 Republican senators voting for an assault weapon ban isn't incredibly high. Or is it? You see, I didn't think Republicans in the House would vote in favor of an assault weapon ban at all. But that's exactly what happened. To make matters worse, less than a month ago, I did a video about how 14 Republicans in the Senate voted for a gun control bill. So yeah, I ain't exactly holding my breath. I always say that the Second Amendment should be nonpartisan, and this is exactly why. Too many people think just because a politician is a Republican that they automatically believe in the Second Amendment. This can't be further from the truth. Hell, you're seeing this firsthand. This has been going on for decades, though. But social media makes it much harder now to hide it because you have people with huge audiences exposing the way politicians actually vote on gun control. This should be a lesson to everyone watching this. There is nothing guaranteed in politics. The gun community gets complacent way too easily sometimes. We think seeing an R by someone's name is a guarantee that they'll protect your two-way rights. But as we see here, that ain't always the case. Long story short, you have to stay on top of these politicians. If they think they can get away with something, they will try. Then turn around during election time and then act like they're the biggest two-way supporters on the planet while their voting record looks like they're the leader of the anti-gun lobby. You have to treat politicians like Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania and Chris Jacobs of New York like children. The only thing they understand are consequences. Stop voting for people who say what you want to hear, but then vote against your interests. Always remember these wise words from George Bush. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fool me, we can't get fooled again. They showed you who they are. Now act accordingly. As for the bill going to the Senate, you all know what to do. I'll put a link in the description section of this video where you can contact your senator and tell them to vote nay on this AR-15 ban bill because AR-15s are protected by the Second Amendment. The Supreme Court already established that. They said guns in common use are protected by the Second Amendment. And right now, they are trying to take away one of the most popular rifles in this country. So do what you need to do and reach out to your senator and let them know how they should be voting on this particular bill. Because once again, the AR-15 is protected by the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It didn't say only handguns, it said arms. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment 
When it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.